Hello there and welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. Today we are on episode number 55. As always, I'm Shane. You can follow me on Twitter at smthomas3. Also, go ahead and go over to codecrowdy.com if you haven't already and sign up for the newsletter here on the left. I send out a newsletter every once in a while that has some links to popular articles on my blog, also some other Drupal insights, and uh, eventually I'll be sending out a couple courses that only people from my newsletter will be able to access. So go ahead and get signed up, and we'll go ahead and get started today. I'm pretty excited about today's episode. It's been something I've wanted to do for a while. I, th I believe it was originally recommended from the contact form on the CodeKarate.com website, but basically... I'm going to go ahead and call it a Drupal module investigator episode. I found that there's a disconnect between writing your first module and actually understanding how a more complex module works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take what's going to start as just some simple Drupal modules and I'm going to break them down and go over the code and show you not only how it works but why it works the way it does. And this is going to hopefully help fill the gap between if you're a module developer just starting out and actually being able to build some pretty cool modules. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go over this email field module today and I'm going to look at the code. I'm only going to focus on the field API portions of the code mainly because it you know, I don't really have time to go over all of the code but I'll just go over the portions that I think are important to get started or at least an important portion of the module. If you haven't already watched episode number 42, I believe, yes, 42, it goes over the email field module, and it will show you some of the basics on how the module actually works. Today we're going to focus more on the code behind the email field module, and how it works the way it does, and how I go about deconstructing a module if you need to figure out why it's working the way it does, or if you need to figure out how you can interact with that module. So the first thing, let's go ahead and open up all of the files from this module. You can see it's the email module. It has, looks like seven files in it. I've went ahead and opened all of them here. Uh, the first is the license file. That's added on by Drupal, so we're going to go ahead and ignore that. The next is a readme file. This is an important place to start if you're looking at a module and you're not sure what it does or how it works. Uh, the readme file could be very helpful, so you could read through that. This email.feeds.inc, this is a, it just integrates with the feeds module. We're not going to go over this part today, but you can of course take a look and figure out what it's doing. Also this email.migrate, this is support for the migrate package. I believe this is for migrating from Drupal 6 to Drupal 7. We're going to ignore that one today as well. We're going to take a look at the info file. The info file is basically the configuration file for your Drupal module. In this case it says the name is email, it gives it a description. The core is 7.x because it is a Drupal 7 website. It's a Drupal 7 module intended for use on a Drupal 7 website. You can see the package is fields, so that will put it in the fields uh, field set on the modules page. And it also includes that migrate.inc file that we're going to ignore. So go ahead and close that one out. And I'll show you, if you go into the modules page, into the fields section, that's where that package comes in. You can see the email module has been enabled. We'll now go to the install file. We have email field schema. And this, as you can see, this comment is very helpful. It tells you it's implementing hook field schema. So we're going to actually take a look at what that does. And it's this is very helpful when you're trying to look through and figure out what a module is doing. So I'm just going to Google search that uh, hook. You can use any search engine you want, of course. And I'm going to go to the api.drupal.org page on hook field schema. You can see this defines the field API schema for a field structure. What this module does, and you can go back and watch the previous video, it creates an email field that you can use inside a content type 
in Drupal. So in this example, I have a content type called test fields, and one of the fields in there is an email field. So what this does is this defines a way to store that data from the field. You can see that it defines the column as email, the type is a var car, which is a variable character, a length of 255, and this actually creates uh, that database table to store this email field data. So that's how that works from the install file. We'll now take a look at the module file. As I said before, we're only going to look through about the first 200 lines of it today just to save time, but you can of course take a look at the rest. The first thing is hook field info. We're going to take a look at that one. And you can see this defines field API field types. It gives it a label, description, settings, and a couple other properties for the array that you can return. You can see that it the key of this array is email, the label is email, and it says it gives a description, gives it the default widget, the default formatter, and the property type. So let's go ahead and see how that works out. You can see the field type right there is set as email. If you click this drop down, you see there is an email field type. Let's go ahead and change this to emails just to see how it works. It's one thing you can do. It's good to change the code, tweak it a little bit, save it, and see how it has an effect because that will allow you to really dig in and find out how that's working. You'll notice this was changed to emails and it says emails now in the drop down. So that is where that comes into play. So creating a new field type is as simple as implementing that hook with your own different, uh, based on the type of field you need, different information. This is the migrate API information that we're going to go ahead and ignore. The next is hook field validate. We're going to follow the same pattern we have before and go ahead and look that up and see what it does. It says it validates this module's field data. So it goes ahead and says if there are validation problems, it adds to the errors array, which is passed by reference. So there is no return value because this is in fact passed by reference. You can see what it's doing here is it's looping through these items. All of the items from this content type. And if there is an item that is an email type, which is what we defined up here, then it's going to try to validate this email address by calling this valid email address function. If it is valid, it's going to just ignore it. But if it's not valid, which is in this case, the not valid, it's going to go ahead and set a message saying this is not a valid email address and it's going to pass in the error. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at that. I am going to try to create a simple test fields content type and I'm going to try to create an example or an email example but I'm going to put in an invalid email address. You'll say you'll see that it says all the characters I entered is not a valid email address. I could of course change this, add a couple exclamation points for instance, try to save it again. You'll notice my exclamation points come up so you can interact with the code that way and see how this validate function is working. Hook field widget error is another hook and this is does something a little bit different. This one, it says, flags a field level validation error. So all this does is set uh, an error on the widget itself, I believe. So let's go back to this.
that it, uh, on the widget form itself, I believe, is where this error comes into play. But you can see all it's doing is just setting, if there's an error message, it's setting it on the element. So that is all that is doing. Let's go ahead and just because I'm not 100% sure on this, I'm just going to check it quick. This shouldn't do anything in this case because I believe it's on that widget page. I haven't actually looked over this code whoops, very much yet, so I'm learning just as I'm trying to teach you guys and girls. Alright, so as you can see, when I do not have that, so it is in fact using that, when I do not have this getting set, this is just setting this air that's getting passed through here. So when I commented that out, you notice that what should have been an error was now passed through. If I uncomment that, save it, now the error is showing up. So that's this actually is setting the error. So in most cases, this is probably going to be pretty much the same, the same thing regardless of what you have in your validate function. It could be different, but I'm not exactly sure in what cases that might be. Uh, I'm sure if you read the documentation on Drupal.org, it will give you some additional information on what that can do. The next is this hook content is empty. And this one, we'll go ahead and take a look. I don't, I'm not familiar with this one either. And you can see it doesn't look like there's any documentation for that hook. So I'm not exactly certain. You can see it talks about some CCK, so I'm not sure exactly what this does. Maybe it has a purpose, maybe it does not. You could, of course, change the code, test it out, see if it has any impact. This could be something legacy from the Drupal 6. It could have a purpose, and I'm just not aware of it, but go ahead, and if you figure it out, go ahead and let me know in the comments section. This hook field formatter info. Let's take a look at that one. As you can see, this process is pretty much the same. If you're just getting new or getting uh, brought up to speed on building Drupal modules, the process of deconstructing an existing module is pretty much the same. You look through the hooks, you figure out what they do, and then you can, of course, use those hooks. When you want to learn about the field API, you can just do a search for the field API, learn about the various hooks that need to be implemented, look at modules like the email or link module, and figure out how to create your own fields using the Drupal 7 field API. So hook field formatter info exposes field API formatter types. You can see there's email default, email contact, and email plain. Also there's a conditional formatter. If the module exists, which in this case means the module is downloaded and installed, and this is the spam span module, it adds another format. Let's go ahead and take a look at what that means. So the when you come over to the structure content types and I go into my content type I go to manage display you'll notice there are a couple different formats here. There's the default email link, email contact form and email plain text and that corresponds to this hook or the, this hook field formatter info. And I'm going to stop there for today because I don't want to make this go too long, but I'm going to finish up the rest of this module, or at least through all the field API types, tomorrow. So I'll be going over the rest of this tomorrow, and I'll actually go through and I'll create a new formatter and show you how that shows up and how that can be used. And I'll also go through what these formatters are doing and how you can, of course, use this hook in your own module. So that's it for today. On the Daily Dose of Drupal module investigator episode of the email field module. We'll be back again tomorrow and I will finish this up and then we'll continue on with learning other Drupal stuff. So thanks again for watching. As always, I'm Shane. Follow me on Twitter if you haven't already and I will be back again next time. Thanks again. Bye.